Hi everyone, Renata here from Retro Reactions. Today I have a wonderful little social guidance film for you from 1949 called Dating Do's and Don'ts. It was produced by Coronet Instructional Films. Uh, it is the Kodachrome version, which is great because it's pretty high quality uh, versus a kinescope version. Uh, but it is missing uh, the first minute or so, so you won't see uh, credits or the Coronet logo. Uh, so if you want to skip my commentary on this film, I will put the start time of the actual film uh, on the screen. But I do encourage you to listen to some of it because uh, it's, it's very interesting, I think, the history. So Coronet Instructional Films was founded by a guy named David Smart. He was uh, the owner of Gentleman's Quarterly as well as Esquire. So he figured he could make some real money doing this. He, would, he felt he had a, a, a talent for that and that he could leverage uh, his publications uh, in order to, to obtain financing. He also figured that he could, he lived outside of Chicago and he could use the local teen population as talent in the films. And there were many men coming back from the armed services who worked in war propaganda films or other forms of uh, film production, and he could rely on them for his for his production crew. So he built a studio behind his estate in the burbs outside Chicago, and he got to it. And Coronet Instructional Films became a powerhouse in these types of films, social guidance slash social hygiene films, and they were the standard by which all other productions were judged. David Smart did something that no one else had done before. He he wanted to take the what were these really dry instructional films of prior years and make them into little Hollywood productions. He wouldn't use the same production value, like the quality of the film and so forth, but he wanted to turn them into little dramas with actors who could bring things to life and appear realistic rather than just the experts, you know, dictating to young people how to behave. So um, this was considered a new idea. It was new in education, the technology had advanced, and so he was combining these newer ways of thinking and the newer technology um, and melting it a little bit with some of the stuff from the old instructional films. And you'll see that uh, in this film. Now, he had to do a little convincing. People were, um, you know, there are many people out there who still believe that Hollywood was a den of iniquity and anything that was like a Hollywood production was just inherently evil. So it took a little while, but then, you know, um, yeah, these films proved very popular. Carnet did very well, sold many, many films. And uh, as I said, were, you know, they, they really, they really did quite a job. So let me start the film uh, shortly here and uh, just tell you quickly that uh, the actors here, the, there are two main actors. John Lindsay plays Alan Woody Woodruff and Jackie Gleason, I kid you not, plays Ann Davis, the gal that he takes out on a date. And apparently John Lindsay had a crush on Jackie Gleason during the production. Uh, and uh, yeah, I don't know what became of her, but apparently he became a stockbroker in Chicago. Uh, and so, yeah, they were, you know, they were just a lo local teens that, you know, that were working, you know, in the film and they were all paid a very small amount of money. I think it was, I, I'll, I'll put it on the film, but I think it was $50 each, uh, but I'll, I'll double check that. Anyway, the idea here is that, uh, Woody receives a ticket to admit one couple to the high tea carnival hijinks ensue <laughs> more or less but anyway uh, the running time is about 13 minutes the director is gilbert altschul uh and they're the expert and there was always an expert that consulted on these films it was reuben hill the research professor of family life at the university of north carolina um that's sort of an interesting title right then and their research professor of family life so let's start the film yes mom i've got it What's that? Hmm. Oh, yes. The ticket he told me about. Well, let's see what he has to say. Here's the latest on my broken ankle. Doc says I'll be all right. Only I have to stay off my feet. 
for a week or so. Anyway, here's the ticket for the high team carnival. It's too late to turn it in, so you have yourself a time and tell me all about it. So lots has been made about the slow reading here, but my guess is that the director just told him to do it that way so that the audience would have a chance to follow along. Uh, but yeah, it's interesting. One couple. That means a date. Not like just going around with the crowd. Just me and the girl. Well, that's all right. Only, what girl? Who? How do you choose a date? Whose company would you enjoy? Okay, enter the authoritative voice. You will find this in pretty much every social hygiene slash uh, social guidance film. Almost always male. Uh, often accompanied by text as, as it is here. And many times they will start with yes or no, and the cadence will either go up or down depending on what they're trying to reinforce or what they're trying to discourage. Uh, so this is the part of the sort of old style instructional film that Coronet incorporated into the dramatic action. So it's always going to be a cut in the dramatic action. And then there's a a very strong teaching moment as determined by the export, as determined by the filmmakers. Um, and so this will be peppered throughout the film. Well, one thing you can consider is looks. You Woody think? Woody thought of Janice and how good looking she was. I'm sure he He'd did. He'd really have to rate to date somebody like her. I don't know, does he rate? Yes, he'd enjoy that, except well, it's too bad Janice always acts so superior and bored. She'd make <laughs> yeah, she a fellow feel bored. awkward and inferior. Well, perhaps someone who doesn't feel superior. There's Betty. And yet, it just doesn't seem as if she'd be much fun. What about Anne? I'm sorry, I think Betty got a raw deal. She got a raw deal. She knows how to have a good time and how to make the fellow with her relax, have fun too. Yes, that's what a boy likes. There's he wants the yes to know again. he's appreciated. Anne would be fun on a date. So you'll notice that the message is being sent to the girls in the audience because this is this was shown to you probably middle school and high school students across the country that the job of the girl is to make the boy feel comfortable. So Woody decided he'd ask Anne for this first date. But just how should he ask her? Woody's and cute. what if she refused? No, it won't be easy asking for that first date. He was a good choice for this. Well, Woody, huh? Hi, Ed. Here's a teaching door. moment. Yes, Don't work too hard. But less of the hard sell, not the authoritative voice. For the text. Woody is watching and Eddie, learning. This private? No, stick around if you like. Well, hello, oh, Grandma. Edward, I thought I heard you come in. Hi, Mom. What's for supper? Mom. Oh, Mom. Is it all right with you if I have a date Saturday night? Well, of course, you generally go out she on had Saturday. Them late. Uh, hello, may I speak to Mary, please? But, Mom, this is different. A date. I, well, I haven't asked her yet. But I'd like to take Aunt Davis to the high team carnival. Oh, Anne's a nice girl, but a date. Mom's well, not rather sure. young. Oh, Mom, give him a break. I think he can swing it. We all have to start sometime. Well, if you don't overdo on dating, Ed knows what I mean. Weekends only and not too late. Hey, Thank Mom. Mom is laying down the law. I just call up to check on the night. I think I can get by a little earlier than usual. How's 7.30? All right, Mary. Bye now. Woody's learning by example. Boy, you sure make it sound easy. How do you do it? Practice, my boy. Experience. But I don't think I'll know what to say, what to talk about. 
Now, oh, don't worry about that. Just be your natural, talkative old self. Come on, let's see what's for supper. Wait Good advice. Thing. Oh, Mom, is the floor dry yet? Yes, you can come in. I guess Mom washes the floor right before she calls people in for for a meal. Teaching manners while they're teaching about dating. Multitasking with the message. Hello, M Mrs. Davis. This is Woody. Uh, I mean, Alan Woodruff. M may I speak to Anne? How do you ask for a date? <laughs> what about this? Uh, Anne? Well, uh, how about a date? Uh, well, I mean... Well, really? No thanks, Woody. Hmm. Well, suppose he did it this way. Hi, uh, Anne. What you doing Saturday night? Well, I... I guess I'm busy. Oh, yeah? Any chance of giving him the brush off for me? <laughs> well, of all the nerve! Well, is there another way? Anne? This is Woody. Well, I have a ticket for the high team carnival Saturday, and... Well, would you like to go? Why, yes, Woody. I'll have to talk to my folks about it. But I think I can go. That'll be fun. Yeah. Well, shall I pick you up about 8 o'clock? That's fine, Woody. 8 o'clock Saturday. I think it'll be all right, but I'll let you know for sure. Bye. So, in these types of films, there are always going to be these learning moments where they show several options. There's going to be usually a, one or two bad options and then the good option, and it'll be very clear from the authoritative voice as to which one the film is trying to push. A date with Woody. Wow, that's a sexy dress. I'm sure Woody will love that. Come in. Hi, Ann. Hi, Judy. What are you doing? Why aren't you the inquisitive little sister? I'm getting ready for my date tonight with Woody. Oh, he's nice. A date, huh? What'll you do? Go to some fancy place for dinner? No, silly. We're going to the high teen carnival. And then he'll bring me home. Oh, that doesn't sound like much. I agree. Uh, we'd have fun at the carnival, you and I, wouldn't we? Oh, yes. Well, Woody and I are going to have fun in just that way. I think the important thing about a date is to have a good time. And <laughs> you don't need to spend a lot of money to do that. You just enjoy... Okay, that was a big message to the teen audience. And that is, if you were a girl going out on a date, you don't put the boy in a position to spend lots of money. You need to be um, thoughtful about that. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that, but uh, it's, it's really interesting how these films definitely pushed on the girl uh, all of the ideas about ma managing, managing the guy's resources and making sure he felt comfortable and all those things. Yeah, it's, it's very clear. Whatever you're doing, whether it's movies or parties or anything, and you leave your boyfriend enough money, so he'll ask you again. My, <laughs> right, that's out key. Late. You want to be asked out again. Mom and Dad and I have an agreement about what time to come in. Look, um, will you be a honey and get my stockings from the bathroom? Sure. Stockings, pre-pantyhose. What Mom, a dram. Mom, do we have any cleaning fluid? There's a spot on my coat. Goodness, you know we have some. Oh, here, let me. No, no, I'll do it. That's it, son. Look your best. Your first date is mighty important to you. Yeah. So the husband is drawing dishes. That's also done 
on purpose to show that he shares in the workload. That was not something you would have seen in the old days uh, in any kind of instructional film. Were you excited the night of your first date? I sure was. <laughs> so was I. I took my date seriously. A date was a major event. Why, the night of my first date, <laughs> my date had a flat tire and he was an hour late. And he didn't even bother to call me. Well, when he finally came, I had to run upstairs and Can do my face and my hair all over again. Oh, I was so upset. That fella had a lot to learn about girls. Your mother lost all interest in him after she met me. <laughs> and the moral of that story is that I should be on time tonight, right? You bet. And the same goes for Anne. Any girl who can't be ready on time for a date isn't good enough for my boy. Well, what are you doing? Note to girls, <laughs> be ready on time. Oh, go find a mirror so you can see yourself. <laughs> Hi, Woody. Oh, hi. Big night, eh? Yeah. Flowers. Anne won't expect flowers, will Just she? Just don't go in front of any oh. open flames because oh, that spot so. remover I'm is thinking these highly because flammable. It's a special occasion. Of course, if you want to take flowers anyway, I guess there's no law against it. But, but I don't have to unless it's a ritzy affair. Well, that's the general idea. Flowers for a prom or a very special party. Otherwise, you don't need to. Say, I'll have to run. Me too. See you later. Good information to the audience. I'm going, folks. When to and when not to provide flowers to a girl. Okay. You need to pretend here that you're hearing a Tyrolean dance. Unfortunately, I got a content ID warning from Facebook when I uploaded my video, which I think is probably just not the case. But one cannot fight these content ID warnings. The system is stacked against creators. So um, like every other creator, I'm simply removing the audio. Uh, and unfortunately, uh, some of, the, uh, some of the, the song is underneath the narration audio. So unfortunately, that has to be deleted too. Uh, but just pretend that all of this good, clean fun is happening. And, uh, you know, they're having a great time at the high teen carnival. And then the authoritative voice comes in right at the end. Like a wet blanket. But when you're having fun, time goes all too fast. Well, it's the time Anne had set for getting home. And now, good night. The end of a perfect evening. This but is crucial. How do you say good night? <laughs> There's the Perhaps. authoritative meal. Don't leave. <laughs> well, that's the end. What of am? That. Terrible example number one. Don't do this. Or it could go this way. Well, so long. Bad example Just number two. Just like that. <laughs> After all, a girl <laughs> likes to know you've had a good time. That's right. That's so true. So let's try saying good night again. One more way. And this is well, the way it's getting way late. they want you to do it. Yes, it is. I'd ask you in for a bite to eat if it weren't so late. Um, let's plan to get home in time for a sandwich or something next time. Say, that sounds good. I'll call you next week. Will you? Well, thanks so much. I had loads of fun. They're cute so together, I. actually. Good night, Woody. Night, Anne. <laughs> Yes, that was the right choice. He's happy. She's happy. The world is the world is all good. So I hope you enjoyed that. I think it's a nice little film. It's a good representative of the genre made by a very high quality producer. And who knows how audiences, teen audiences, really responded to something like this. Probably mixed. 
uh, we find them humorous. They were not supposed to be humorous, but they were supposed to be enjoyable. Uh, that's That was Coronet's goal, to make them more appealing and to connect. And of course, all of these films are a reflection of a, a society and behaviors that were desired. They didn't really reflect reality. Um, and there were lots of additional messages in it, not just the main message, but uh, yeah, they almost always uh, were heavy-handed with manners and things like that, regardless of the of the of the topic. So again, thank you so much for watching, and I hope you'll tune in for the next one.